Kenneth King, founder of Blue Biometrics. Uh, thanks for joining us on My Security TV and welcome to the World Police Summit here in Dubai. Pleasure to be here with you. Wonderful. Uh, look, we have crossed paths before. You're a former Queensland Police Service uh, officer as well, and you've got a, a booth uh, here. How are you finding the show, I think, most uh, importantly? This is really your target market in terms of uh, what you do. Absolutely. It's been fantastic. It's a, been a very well-run event. Uh, it's been quite impressive. We do do international events uh, quite a bit, and, and this has really raised the bar. It's excellent. Well, maybe talk us into your solution. You're doing uh, applications for fingerprints, but also iris scanning, and we just mentioned uh, on voice biometrics as well. But yeah, what's uh, sort of your cutting edge technology, and I suppose most importantly, how is it being received here? It's been received uh, very well. We're one of the global leaders in contactless fingerprint capture by smartphone camera. Uh, we've recently delivered in Asia uh, for a law enforcement agency a multimodal system as a full solution fingerprint, face, uh, voice, and iris via a USB plug in scanner. And really, um, uh, we've been working in contactless now for a long time, and it's reaching an inflection point in the market because. Uh, smartphones are a very high standard now and the software is maturing and uh, people are understanding the benefits of uh, contactless. Well, agencies are starting to issue frontline police with mobile devices and, and smart devices and I take it just integrates with that? Ex exactly and that's be, be part of the trend that we saw in the, in the early days of involvement is that as digital policing accelerates and people look to having one device uh, you don't want to add any devices, you want to keep to that one device yeah. model. Yeah. Well, that, well, I was, uh, we spoke to um, uh, Carmen Best, uh, former commissioner with Seattle Police. We were talking about the, the 30 years of policing that we've both uh, experienced. Yeah. Uh, really, it is hard to, to describe where that technology comes for frontline police. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the, the on the street uh, applications for this and, and how to pl frontline police use it? Uh, absolutely. And benefit from it as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, so field identification is, is really important. Uh, identity is the first point of proof for everything that you do in policing. And uh, so, one of the things that uh, you need to know is who am I dealing with? It might be on a roadside, I might be a traffic stop, and I need to know who is this person? Are they who they say they are? Um, and being able to verify their identity or if they're not providing identity and sometimes you might be dealing with a, a deceased person or yeah. an uncooperative person and being able to identify that person against existing records is, is very important both for operational effectiveness uh, but also for safety. Uh, does, it, does it potentially change or require a sort of, uh, well the opportunities for police, I mean even on a roadside, roadside stop uh, yeah, where are the police powers? Is it potentially challenging police powers in terms of what they can and can't do? Because uh, why wouldn't we just start to take photos of people's hands as they uh, get pulled over? Is that that's the capability that it has, right? Yeah, absolutely. And so it does vary in jurisdictions. There are some jurisdictions that, that don't have a mobile uh, capability, but in fact the law is already friendly to, to, to that. Or um, they have hardware in action, but the problem is that the hardware is too expensive for all officers to have a fingerprint scanner. Yeah. And other jurisdictions are actually changing their legislation to get up to speed with the opportunity. And, and the good news is it's, it's actually good for everyone too. So from the point of view of the member of the public, um, sometimes people find themselves um, going into police custody because there is identity issues. And being able to bring someone before a court requires you to be sure of their identity. And so what it can do is actually avoid the situation where someone needs to be arrested, taken back to a station and charged, uh, where they can be dealt with in the field, often by a, a notice to appear or a summon stole process. Is there prospects for the technology to be used at airports as well, particularly on the contactless part, uh, uh, you know, Absolutely, post-pandemic? Yeah. Yeah, there are, there are a lot of border security uh, applications, including uh, governments are very interested in uh, people being able to self-enrol. Uh, we've been involved with the biometric self-enrolment feasibility trials with the UK Home Office, and we note that other governments have interest in those sort of processes. And when you get to the border, uh, increasingly there's, there's, a, there's a vision that people want to see a seamless border where you arrive and have the, the minimum of friction. But even in that environment, um, 
contactless fingerprints might have been used ahead of time. They might be used by a mobile officer on the floor of the airport, uh, but there are also static options as well. So being an application, anyone can download it and take a photo of their own fingerprints, right, and then submit them? Well, how, well, how, well, how would that work? Well, well no, yeah, basically uh, you would have an app with the particular government and you might be applying for an electronic travel authority or a visa, yeah. uh, and as that part of that process, uh, you'd provide your fingerprints. But th this is brings up a really interesting innovation uh, we're working on is that there isn't globally a product other than what we're developing right now uh, that can make sure they're your fingerprints. So people who know biometrics will be familiar with concern mm. about spoofing and liveness. This is a bit more than if they these are live fingers. This is, are they the fingers that belong to that person? So when we do a, a, a face uh, and compare that to a passport image, we can be sure that that's the same person. Yeah. Um, but enrolling the fingerprints, uh, we need binding uh, remotely uh, for those remotely enrolled fingerprints. And, and that's what we have a, a patent pending uh, solution on nice. the way for. Yeah. But uh, as, as long as it's multi-factor, it could be a factor within that identification process mm. outside of uh, sort of a law enforcement application. Oh, a, a, absolutely. We banking have, and the like, financial? Yeah, we, we have a, a new reusable digital identity uh, platform and that's called Identity Blue, and that is uh, exactly Exactly for those sort of use cases because um, the way you need to protect your own identity is with your own biometrics so you can control that and that's what Identity Blue does. Yeah. Very interesting. Well, look, look, you're on the front line again <laughs> after QPS yeah. uh, but here at the World Police Summit. Uh, enjoy the rest of the next couple of days here. It's great to see an Australian uh, here uh, and again manning their booth and, yeah. and doing business here in Dubai. But Kenneth King uh, with Blue Biometrics, thanks very much for joining us on My Security TV and enjoy the rest of the World Police Summit. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, and uh, look, really, thank you to uh, Dubai Police and and all yeah. of the organisers. It's been fantastic.